Hello everybody, it's Marcy from wavesofcommunication.com. Welcome to another episode of the Language Facilitation Helpline podcast, and thank you for tuning in today. The fastest results come when you enjoy the process of language facilitation. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Waves of Communication channel for another Spotlight interview. I'm here with Natalie, who is a transformational coach, and she has some exciting information to share with us. Hi, Marcy. Nice to be invited here on your podcast. And I'm a mother of uh, three children myself. I have three boys. And what I do is how I work with parents is working with the mind and the body to understand why we get triggered, especially by our our children's behaviors. Parents come to me and I help them understand what's going on in their mind and their body and their energy so they can make better choices that's going to benefit their family and raise wholesome and successful children. Well, that is amazing. And I know that the parents on my channel are paying attention to what they're doing as far as, um, you know, interacting with their kids. Can you give us some examples of the kinds of problems that you find parents are feeling in themselves? What do they feel about their, what kinds of, of reactions and, and behaviors are you talking about here? Yeah, often parents will come to me if they're yelling, shouting at their kids and they're getting tired of it. Um, And also if they are, you know, hitting a roadblock. And, uh, but most importantly, the way they feel. It's something is telling them something needs to change about how they're interacting with their children, about, you know, um, what they're seeing their children coming to them with, because most of the time that's what's triggering them. Yeah, and the, the kids of the parents who are, you know, on my channel, they are not talking well yet. So they're using other things to communicate, communication behaviors. Some of them might be aggression and tantrums and or avoidance and withdrawal. Those are the kinds of things that maybe the kids are displaying. And I find that a lot of times, not just sometimes, but a lot of times, the behaviors that these nonverbal kids are displaying are behaviors that they've learned from their parents. I agree because, and the the first thing I teach parents is to understand what does do those behaviors mean in the first place? When your child is not behaving, is not doing what you want them to do and you're perceiving them, as being difficult and they're having these tantrums and you know they're acting out what does that mean first of all children misbehave often and most of the time because they are trying to communicate something to us that they don't know how to communicate with words either they're too young if they're not talking especially and they don't have the language And for whatever reason, if they're a little bit older as well, they don't have the words. Well, I 100% agree with everything you just said. And so let's get into some strategies and talk about, because that is the reality of literally everybody who is listening to this podcast. And um, yeah, their kids don't have the ability or access. And I I don't always say that it's an inability because like you said, even though kids are talking, it is the access to the right words that is missing here. They don't know the right words to use, so they use these other behaviors or even maybe the wrong words or words we don't want to hear in kids that are talking. So let's get into some of the strategies. If you were presented with a mom of a child who's, let's say, four or five Mm -hmm. and they're still not talking well yet they might be saying a word here or there or they might be using a lot of other kinds of of non non non-meaningful speech like singing or making noises or things like that 
And those are the, the behaviors that they're using on, an, on a regular basis. And a mom is frustrated with these behaviors. They're annoying, they're interrupting, they're frustrating. And that's the dynamic we're dealing with. A child who's trying to communicate and a mom who's frustrated with that communication. Where do you start, Natalie? I think what we need to do is to connect with the child, first of all, right? And not making that behavior as a bad thing. Obviously, they're singing or they're doing whatever behavior they're engaging in. They're, they're trying. And to actually recognize and validate that. And so a child, Marcy, can feel everything, first of all, before having language, right? So they can feel. So if they are coming to us and they are having trouble communicating, but they're using singing, playing, or whatever else, they're making the effort. And so when they come to us, they will feel if we're open to that, opening to attune to what their needs are, or are we rejecting it? And the moment if they feel like they are being rejected and we're not open to them, it's going to put a roadblock. Right. And, and no progression is going to happen. So I think the parent has to come to understand if that bothers them so much to see their child not speaking, first of all, to understand why you're triggered by that. Oh, I love that. I really love that. And because I think a lot, the society tells parents to take their kids to a therapist and for them to analyze the child and find out what's wrong with the child when you really do need to dial it back to yourself as the parent and facilitator. You are parenting and bringing up this child and it is up to you to find the way to reach them so that you can parent them into the, the human that they want to be and you want them to be, right? Yes, for sure. Because, you know, like a baby come into this world, right? And the baby communicates right away by crying. And so understanding, you know, from like, as soon as you become a mother and you have a baby, well, even communication starts in utero, right? That connection starts in utero, actually. And then yeah. when baby is born, is that how do we, how do we respond to the cries? And we have all sorts of school out there that tells you, you know, ignore the baby's cry. You're going to spoil them, and so on. That never sat well with me. I couldn't bear leaving my child crying. So. But I know a lot of mothers, and I'm not blaming mothers. How do we respond to that? Yeah, I think that's a really big question. A really big question that every parent of every late talker needs to be asking. And I'm super glad that you brought it up because... It, it's different. It's different for every parent because the root cause of the late talking is different for every child. Yes. And the reality is not all kids show up able to. All babies are able to cry, right? But as they get older, some kids don't evolve the communication into real speech and they continue to use these triggers because that's what a cry is yes. a baby cries a certain way to trigger their caregiver to respond to exactly. them and help them like you said just like the kid who is having a tantrum it's a trigger to the people who are caring for the child to come and help them and if it is responded to that cry for help is responded to with correction or punishment, those cries for help are going to stop coming, aren't they? Of course, because, you know, a child knows as a baby, 
I cried. I did cry when they were not there and nobody came. And I cried again and again and again. And over time, what does the baby say to themselves? Well, nobody's going to come. Nobody's. I'm alone and nobody's going to come. And All right. So let, let's talk about how we can help parents who find themselves in the situation of, I call it disconnection, basically, because you're the, the only reason that you would be frustrated and yell at a child is because you're coming at the situation from a lack of understanding mm -hmm. and connection. It's a disconnect. You think something in your mind that is different from what that child's communicating. And I agree that it is a lack of connection and it does happen over time. The more times your child calls out to you and you respond or react in a way that they don't like, they're going to stop doing it. And this is what causes the separation and the disconnect and the isolation that happens. And also the resistance to any kind of fun training or intervention that you might bring because they don't trust you. They don't trust that you're going to show up for them because when they needed you most, you didn't. Yes, their attachment needs were not met. And right. That's the thing that's as a child, the child knows they need their attachment needs to be met in order to be able to survive, to thrive. And when that's lacking, the child cannot thrive. And right. That's what you're going to see with behaviors happening. Right. And so how to help parents? First of all, I asked the parents, OK, how do you react? First of all, what's your usual reaction and understand why you're reacting? Right. So you're reacting because you're triggered. Right. They have this explosive reaction. Those explosives they didn't come from your child. They were in there inside of you already. So then I help them to connect with the emotion that's already there. That's usually come out in a very forceful way, eruptive way, in a way that they don't even think about it, just come out, right? We are going to get triggered no matter what. That's we are humans. That happens, right? But how we respond to the trigger is what makes a difference. Can you talk a little bit about some of the ideas surrounding what does this environment, this connected, I call it the language facilitation zone, this connected space, I, it's an energetic space, definitely that exists. Uh, it's the same space that you know when the baby's in utero, the baby wants pickles, you know, that same space that comes out into the world after the baby's born and that you connect with every time they kind of look sideways and you know they need to go potty or what all those intuitive communications that you have with these kids i think parents forget you know they get in when they're not connected with their kids they forget how to um listen with their intuition and hear those messages that they need to hear how do you help parents reconnect with their intuitive connection with the child so that they can tune in and show up better for their kids and that's where that inner work comes because we live in a society where we can be pulled into ten thousand directions and as a parent you know, we have so many responsibilities and I understand that. So the first thing I do is for the parent to reconnect with themselves. That's the key thing. If we're not aware of our own emotions and how we're feeling, it's actually really hard to now turn around and attune to our children. I'm a mother and I know when I'm, you know, stressed out, it's, it's so much harder and I will miss those moments and those opportunities to understand and to be compassionate towards my own child, right? So it's important then for the parents, and that's how I work with them, is to understand what they're feeling, you know, the emotions that they're experiencing day in and day out, and to connect with what, with every emotion, there is a belief there. 
right? So when we are angry in that moment, and, and anger is an emotion, and it's okay to be angry, but when we are angry, what are we believing and perceiving about ourselves in that moment? Is when my child is not speaking yet, and that's a trigger, especially when I go out in public and other people are there, and now I feel the pressure, right? Sure. My child is this age and they're not speaking. What is going on up there? Well, boom, like if I'm getting angry that my child and I look at my child, I'm frustrated. Well, maybe there's that perception that I'm not a good parent. I'm less than the other parent. And that's a lot of times that's what I'm in the psychology of the parent and to pause there and ask yourself, is that, are you 100% sure and true that that's the case? And most of the time, no parent can tell me it's your absolute truth. Right. I agree. And that, and it's very important to realize your truth and what you believe and if it is something that you truly believe or if it is something that you just are living because other people put that truth onto you your kid is broken you're a bad mom you're a whatever because sometimes these things do come internally i would say more than not they come internally but occasionally they come from outside it could even come from their partner of, of course, it will come to their, from their partner, from their parents, um, from other people. And but again, if that is if I ask you, Marcy, you and I can have that happening to us. Right. And I can internalize that and believe it. And you may think, OK, that's what they think. Right. But that is not who I am. And I'm, I'm not believing that and I'm not going to let it affect me. Right. And right. how are you and I going to then re respond differently to that? And that's that's what I want to emphasize on is that how we are taking what others are saying also is telling us a story there. And that has a lot to do with our own way of how we were brought up and the environment we grew up in ourselves, what we've learned, the beliefs we've formed, all of that come, comes into play. Yeah, I see a lot of parents who get started, you know, really wanting tips and tricks and how to get their kids talking faster. And then when they really get into the work, they realize that that really comes second after they learn themselves how to show up. Because if in our, you know, in, in this role as a language facilitator, I am offering you the opportunity to take on the primary responsibility of helping your child make a big shift, a mindset shift in their life from communicating by pulling and pushing you around to choosing to do a hard thing. Listen and learn a whole new language is what we're expecting these kids to do. And they've shown up over and over and over telling you that they don't know how to talk because they're using these other things to do. And you're the parent you're the one that can learn how to do it now if you are in the mindset of i don't know what to do to help my child and i see them having these problems what do you recommend for a parent who's in that mindset one thing is like you say when we first become a mom we've never done anything <laughs> in the mom's role but we had a gut instinct yeah, we have intuition. We that's part of our physiology. That's at our fingertips. Yeah, you, I think that you find what to do. I mean, yes, you can take a course. I have books. I have online courses. I have all kinds of stuff to learn how to help your child. What you've got to do to facilitate the spoken language they need and. I also know that the most important knowledge that you're going to get is not from me. 
It's from your connection with your child. Because remember, we're answering these big questions that Natalie brought up. Why is it that your child doesn't feel comfortable continuing to come to you for assistance? Why did that happen? Right? We need to answer those questions. Why do you feel like you don't know what to do when your child behaves in a certain way? Why does that happen? And the answer that Natalie and I are telling you doesn't come from us. It comes from your connection with your child. They'll tell you what they need from you. They are. They're non they're nonstop telling you what they need from you. It just isn't in spoken language. You have to tune in to your intuition to really hear the real truth. And for that matter, if you know, when I work with people, that's the number one question also I ask is that when something happens in childhood, it's who did you tell? Did you go to your parents? And you would be amazed by the high percentage of people who said no. <gasps> wow. And as yeah, a child, I never thought about how many of these parents potentially have late talkers because of their own trauma in childhood. And that's the only thing. You yes. just don't understand how to show up because you don't have the experience of anybody showing up for you. No, and, they, and nobody mirrored. Right. You know, what needs to happen or you didn't experience it yourself. And, and we learn as humans from watching. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and so this is our experience when we were growing up. And guess what? As a, when we become parent, we are digging in our toolbox and remembering what how we were treated, how it was. And we're repeating the same thing until we change it. Because yeah. I know a lot of parents don't want to parent the yeah. same way they were parented. Right. But unless we look at how what we've learned and then change that we're going to repeat the cycle and that's why you know as parents we always say i never wanted to do what my mom did but i find myself doing exactly that anyway. same thing right because it's right. unconscious a lot of time yeah and i think it's because you're right it is unconscious it's programmed in you yes. it was started to be programmed in you when you were a little kid yeah. You know, and so I think that's the biggest problem. What do we do? So it starts with connection with yourself and connection with your child. And then you can learn the speech tricks and that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And so the parents that you're finding that are approaching you, they're finding that they are disconnected from their kids for all kinds of different reasons, aren't they? Yeah, and, and usually they are being very triggered by, again, behaviors. And it, for your working with parents who have late talkers, for me, it's like it, different various behaviors that their child are presenting that they are not able to, to work with. And they find themselves wanting to fix the behavior, but you and I know like we can fix behavior all we want today maybe this behavior and you think you fixed it tomorrow it's going to be another behavior, another behavior. Like, you know it's never ending but the reason you're not able to help your child when they're having these behaviors is because usually there is a wound within ourselves from our own unmet needs that is being touched upon by our children's behaviors and that's what's coming up. And that's what's making you react and not be able to respond. Yeah. I think that there's sort of two, two bits of work here you have to do. You certainly have this job. As soon as you became a parent, you got a new job, right? And the reality is you can't give up the old job that you had before you were a parent. And that was taking care of yourself. Yes. And not relying on your parents to parent you, you wanted to be an independent adult, make the choices you wanted to make, do the things you wanted to do, be with the people you wanted to be. And we want to empower these kids to do the same. However, they need our support. 
as their parents and caregivers to make the right decisions. And they need for us to not program them, but to allow the space for them to come into their own. And by showing them our emotions, and I think this is it. If you are interested in digging into your own wound healing, perhaps you're one of those moms that will use Natalie's program and my program at the same time. Or you're literally focusing on yourself and you maintain that focus. You can't stop focusing on yourself to start focusing on your child. You have to really balance both at the same time. And that's why I'm so happy to have you on and share the resources that you have so that parents see that their toolbox doesn't just include language facilitation strategies. It includes wound healing strategies. It includes connection strategies. It includes all those things that are necessary for a well-rounded parenting experience where we're raising kids to grow up and be on their own. So tell us, Natalie, about what you offer. They can go to my website, natalielefebvre.com, or they can reach out to me through Facebook. Natalie Lefebvre is my page. And uh, yeah, either way, it's out there and they can connect with me. They can consume my uh, my information. I also have a Facebook group for parents. So yeah. Great. And I love that you have a space, like a Facebook group that people can go and see where there are others. Um, you know, you're not alone in this situation. I would venture to say that every single parent who struggles, you might be watching my videos and you see me talk about how to use tech to help your get kid get talking or how to use outside activities or how to use bath time or whatever to get your kid talking. And those things aren't working for you. And the idea behind the reason it's not working is what Natalie's talking about here. It's the reason that you're confused as to why these strategies aren't working for you. And if that's happening and then you find yourself wanting to give up or wanting to quit or wanting to, you know, just think that you're impossible and sign your kid up for another speech therapy course. This is when I'm telling you your money, your time, your energy is much better spent to focus on yourself. And Natalie's resources will help you do that. Thank you, Natalie, for joining us and bringing up this really important aspect of the language facilitation journey. And I suspect that there are a number of parents out there who are feeling that they are in this situation or maybe on their way to work out through this program. And my resources include the mindset work is before you start fixing your language models and working on letter sounds and teaching sentence level and conversational stuff. It's all about how you show up, moms and dads. So thank you, Natalie, for all these resources. It was a pleasure talking to you and all the best on your platform. It was my pleasure, Marcy, to be on this podcast with you. And thank you for your time and for all the parents listening out there. With a whole range of waves of communication resources, from free content to customized coaching, you now have access to everything you need to elevate spoken language to infinite success. You are welcome to get your journey started with my 11-week language facilitation journey to speech workbook. You can access this workbook and all of the language facilitation resources on my website, wavesofcommunication.com.